So for today's What What Wednesday question, we're gonna answer the question, just how far in debt are you for buying all these different RVs? What what? I'm gonna start off by reading a comment we got on YouTube. We get several of these like this. <laughs> and so I, so I know that this is kind of something that's on people's minds. Like how do we even sleep at night <laughs> with all, all the debt we've got from these RVs? So here's a, says, but now you have an RV that's worth only 40% of what you paid for. Uh, it says your house was at least increasing in value. Your RV will be useless in what, five to 10 years? I believe you have not been wise, unless of course you, like many middle-aged people, are simply fortunate enough to live off an inheritance. That would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> I believe uh, we would be fortunate as well. <laughs> uh, but if you're self-sustaining and have no future family help, uh, you're going to find it very difficult to afford an RV lifestyle. I'm afraid you'll end up renting for the rest of your life. Probably no pension to look forward to. Good luck. By the way, nice to see you guys are expecting another young one soon. Um, yeah, I know. It's, I read this and I was like, he got about everything wrong in this comment. So, yeah, it's really amazing that he knew we were expecting when we weren't is he calling me fat no no i think I don't, that's no. what he's doing i don't think so, so well, now my feelings no hurt. no he didn't call, no that's not what he was saying i think he must have maybe he's watching another channel and thought we we're having a baby or something i don't know so apparently i look pregnant look i don't know what he meant by that all i know is that <laughs> you never assume you never assume. don't ever assume don't ever assume don't ever assume somebody's pregnant when they're not maybe he can tell the future i don't know <laughs> Um, I hope not because the rest of it was pretty grim. Uh, <laughs> so, so far, the, yes. <laughs> really hope this guy's not telling the future. Uh, so far, though, um, we have bought three RVs in the last year and a half. Uh, had a travel trailer, too small. Sold it. Got the fifth wheel, too big. Sold the fifth wheel and got a motorhome. And now, so within a year and a half, we're looking to have four different RVs. <laughs> Honestly, it's not as bad as most people would think. Um, as far as the money was, we have taken the approach for the most part with RVs, um, especially with our first one. Our theory was if I can find a deal on an RV, I know I can turn around and sell and either at least break even or even better make some money. There's not a whole lot, not as much risk there for the RV. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was kind of the theory. We'd buy the RV, try it out. If it didn't work out, we'd sell it. Now, yeah, because neither of us had ever even been camping and here no. we are deciding to sell our house and live in a camper and we thought uh, what if we don't even like camping this might be rough <laughs> so that was kind of our thinking we'll start out small in uh, value of the RV so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be that much of a risk and we didn't want to get a new one and, right. you know, and all that starting off so we bought used we found uh, a really good deal Nathan is a master at finding good I'm deals. A master, but yeah. <laughs> he, he's pretty awesome. Don't let him fool you. And I think this is a theory for a lot of people. If you're buying your first RV, all I can say is don't go all in. For all like, in at, for like. Let's say the, you've got ten thousand dollars. Don't go spend nine thousand dollars getting an RV, or don't like tie yourself down to payments on something if you're not sure if it's what you really, really love. Like it's really tough on your first RV, at least for us, because our life changes so much, it's tough to go all in on something. I'm not saying don't buy new. I'm not saying don't spend a significant amount of money. I'm just saying no kind of, yeah. just it is, expect it is that your, something's, yeah. It is your house. I mean, yeah. so we get that. You don't want to, you know, be having something that's breaking down all the time mm -hmm. and you're having to put a bunch of money into it. But, so I get that, I mean, I get that feeling of wanting to go out and buy something super nice and expensive, but we, we've had to kind of work our, our way towards getting where we are. Yeah. Yeah. So we started small, the travel trailer, we bought it for a 15, sold it for 25. We did have some stuff go wrong with it and had to put a few thousand into that, but we still, we made money on our first one. Um, so we sold it. We got a fifth wheel. We bought it for 32, I think, 32.5, something like that. But we were looking for a very, and this is where you get kind of cornered when you're buying stuff. We were looking for a very specific, like an exact model with an exact layout and only like a one or two year range. Um, we still wanted high quality used. So we got, instead of paying 50,000 new, we bought, you know, bought it for 32. Uh, we only sold that one, I think for like 33 when we sold it, but we bought a F-350 to pull it. And we did make money on that. We bought it for 15, I think as well. And we sold it for 23 on the F-350. So we turned around, bought the motorhome. <laughs> we don't know yet on the motorhome. Motorhome is the same deal. We were looking very few models. Um, I actually drove to Texas to get the motorhome. I think we'll come close to breaking even at least on the motorhome, which honestly, that's, that's what's in my mind. If I can buy an RV, use it for one to two years and come back and break even on it, that's great. 
um, it really cuts down on the risk. And although apparently some people think <laughs> we're losing money like crazy um, and that we're having our next kid already and whatever else is going <laughs> on, um, that's, I'm just going to tell you, I mean, that's not the case with us, at least. We've actually made money buying and selling RVs. Uh, that's not what I'm setting out to do. RVs are the kind of thing where, just like if you're looking for a, a weight machine or something, you know, go look for one in the middle of winter when nobody wants to use it. You know, <laughs> you're looking for stuff during the time of year. Don't, if you're looking for a deal on an RV during peak season, it's harder. But if you can find an RV during the right time of the year uh, from the right person, it's a win-win. You know, they maybe want to just get rid of it. Or be willing to drive a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, Nathan's had to do some pretty long hauls. Um, we've never been super lucky and found one super close. I guess our fifth wheel was in three hours. Our fifth wheel was the closest one. It was about four hours away. So, Everything else was yeah. like six, eight, twelve, you know, hours away. So we wanted to talk about this because I know some people may be worried for our financial <laughs> well-being <laughs> if we're looking for another RV, our fourth one in a year and a half. Well, um, and people might be wondering how to do this and how to make changes mm -hmm. or, you know, what if they feel stuck and feel like, well, I'm going to lose money if I sell my RV yeah. or if I go find another RV. And, you know, we just, we really try to put a lot of thought into that and make logical and not emotional decisions sometimes we felt like we've made the best decisions where we were at at the time and some of them didn't work out but life changed and then it was time for something else so i don't feel like we've made we feel comfortable with all the decisions we've made and yeah it's a little hassle sometimes having to move around but we enjoy that part a yeah, little bit so i don't regret it so that, that's been our experience that's probably not everybody's i would say most people if they buy three or four rvs in a year and a half i mean you know, if they're just going and trading them in and not looking for deals, I mean, you can. You can get some serious financial trouble. And so far for us, we sold our house. We got some cash from that. And so we've been able to pay cash for every RV we've had. And I would recommend, um, I'm not saying you have to pay cash for what you're getting, but definitely have cash reserves. And like I said, don't go all out on your first RV. It breaks my heart. I've seen a lot of people, you know, we follow a lot of people, talk to a lot of people who went all out on a brand new RV and like three months later realize it's not mm -hmm. what they wanted at all. And that's not a good situation to be in at mm -hmm. that point because I mean, it's, it's okay to buy new, but you got to really know it's the RV for you if you're going to buy new. Did that just rum kind of? <laughs> I don't know what I just said. That's us. That's our story. If you got other questions or comments, just let us know.